Okay, approximately 70% of statistics students do their homework in time for it be, to be collected and graded. Each student does homework independently. In a statistics class of 10 students, what is the probability that exactly eight will do their homework on time? Students are selected randomly. Okay, so with that, let's start to think about what on earth am I keeping track of? What is the variable in this problem? And as soon as you see probability, there's gonna be something next to it. Look, at exactly eight will do their homework. So I'm keeping track of the number of students who do their homework on time. So this would be number of students who do their homework on time. And just so we're clear, this is in a class of 10. So it's a small class. Okay. So if we're talking about the number of students that do their homework on time, that is definitely discrete. And the, the values this could take on, well, again, think if I'm talking to a, 10 students, 10 of them could do their homework on time, that'd be awesome, right? Nine, eight, all the way down to zero. So if I'm gonna write these, I usually go low to high, the values X can take on are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you could imagine if I had to make a table, that would be a pretty darn long table, right? I'd have to have 11, well actually there are 11 values. I would have 12 columns in that, in that um, table. That'd be a really long table to have to write out. And then on top of that, I'd have to make a massive tree diagram. I mean, imagine, I'll just start to sketch it right here, right? There would be like, does their homework? does not do their homework, right? And we do 70% of the time they do it, 30% they don't, right? And then I'd have to go homework, no homework, homework, no homework. And I'd have to branch that out for 10 students. I would just have a massive, massive tree diagram. I'm gonna erase this because I don't even like thinking about it. All right, and, and again, if that's the case, if you're like, man, is she really asking us to make that large of a tree diagram and that large of a table? The answer is no. I'm not. So the alternative to that is, well, maybe we're in a binomial distribution. So let's check out if we're in a binomial distribution. Now, if I refer back to the page before it, right, we had four properties that we need to check through. We need to see if we have a fixed number of observations or trials called N. Can we call something a success? And then by complement something a failure, are trials independent? And do I have a probability of success for each individual trial? Let's see. Let's see if we can figure this out. So first of all, do I have a fixed number of observations? Sure do. Right? They said I'm going to talk to 10 students. So n is 10. OK. What am I deeming a success in this case? If I look at the setup of the problem, it says doing your homework on time. So here, success. Means student completes homework on time. In terms of trials being independent, well, first of all, they told me it was independent, and for the most part, it is. Uh, one student doing their homework or one student whether or not they decide to do their homework doesn't really have any effect on a, a different student in the classroom doing their homework. Unless you guys are friends or relatives or you're all ganging up to just say, I don't want to do homework today. But for the most part, students doing homework is independent of one another. So I would have written independent just as a gut check, but on top of it, it's written here. All right, so I have independent trials. And I'm also told that the probability of success for any one student doing their homework is 70%. So as I look through this, I've hit all four properties of being in a binomial distribution. You breathe a slight sigh of relief because you're not going to be making a giant table and you're not going to be making a giant tree diagram. All you have to say is X, right, squiggles, right, so the number of students who do their homework on time, it's binomially distributed. I'm going to talk to 10 students, and the probability of success that any one student does their homework is 70%. Okay. Now, in terms of failure and success, 
Let's take a look. We have success, a student doing their homework on time. So what is the complement of that? What does that mean for, for a failure? Well, it means not completing your homework on time, right? So failure is the complement to this. And if we remember that complement idea from back in chapter three, it's the not. So failure student does not complete homework on time. And also kicking back to chapter three, to answer question or part F when it says, what is the probability of failure? Well, we remember from the complement rule, if the probability of an event happening is 70%, its complement is one minus that number. Now your book likes to call it Q. So I'll go ahead and hang with that for a little bit, but really we would just say one minus P. All right, so in this case, one minus 70% is 30%. So if you want to call that Q, that's fine, All right, but the failure rate is 30%. So if 70% of the time students do their homework, by complement, 30% of the time, they do not do their homework. All right, so we're, we're getting closer. We want to refer to the, that wording in the setup of the question where it said, what's the probability that exactly eight will do their homework? So I want to focus in on this exactly eight. It's going to translate into a math symbol. And in, when we start going through these problems, you're either going to have an inequality or an equality. And we want to figure out what exactly it gives us. So let me, let me give you your options. Inside this parentheses, you could have a less than or equal to symbol, a strictly less than symbol, a greater than or equal to symbol, or a greater than symbol. There's the fifth option where you could just have the equal sign. And we're going to pick up phrases to kind of spot when you have a less than or equal to, less than, greater than or equal to, or greater than. But for right now, when you hear the exactly eight, that means equals. That's the symbol you want. We want a particular value of our variable. So we're gonna put in the equal sign. And we'll, we'll expand upon this. In a couple of pages, we'll start looking at the less than or equal to, the less than, the greater than, or equal to, greater than, but I wanna start with the equal to. So here's how we handle the equal to situation. So this takes us back to that coin flipping experiment. So if you remember uh, a few examples ago, we had that coin flip where we were trying to find the probability that exactly two coins flipped up heads, right? And what we started to realize was that there were six different branches that played this out where I got heads, heads, tails, tails, for example, but each of those branches had the same probability. Okay, so we kept going 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 in all the various orders, but that was the same, or that was the probability for each of those, those um, branches and those trees. So I want you to imagine having eight students do their homework, all right, and how many different branches that would involve. So for example, maybe the first student does their homework, so we could say homework, right, then homework, 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 hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then two of them don't, so I'll put the complement on that, right? That's one branch that could happen. I could also have had homework, 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 give me a sec, homework, homework, Maybe this one didn't do it, so it was homework complement, then that one did, and then homework complement again. But you can still see I had eight students doing their homework, two didn't. Eight students did their homework, two didn't. And you can imagine there's gonna be a lot of branches like that, right? I could have the first two didn't do their homework, then the next eight did. Or maybe the first and third person didn't do their homework and the other eight did. But no matter how it shakes out, I want you to see that there's still eight of them doing their homework and two of them not doing their homework. So if we were to do the probability for this first one, right, it would be 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6,
times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7, there will be eight of those students doing their homework, and then two, oops, this would be the complement, two students would not. Right? If I did this one, it was, I had the first seven students do their homework, right? Then the next one didn't, then the next one did, then the next one didn't. But really, this number is the same as this number because you see you have seven of these here plus one more. That would get me to eight. I have one here, one here. That gets me to two. So for any of these, right, if eight students are doing their homework, that means two are not. It's always going to be that combination through the tree diagram. It just depends on the order. And again, that's what we found over here with the heads or tails, right? No matter how we shook it out, it, there was always 2.6s and 2.4s, right? Because there were two heads flipped and two tails flipped. So it's the same idea here. You're gonna have eight kids doing their homework, two kids not doing their homework. And then it'll come down to how many branches, how many branches do I have? How many different ways can 10 students have exactly eight of them do their homework? And we have a number for that in math. Right? It's called a combination. So let me do a little aside and then we're going to come back and we're going to work this formula. All right. And the reason I want to do this aside is because I'm not sure if you've ever seen this symbol before and we want to talk about it before, before I show you how this plays out. So when you see something like this, N, K. All right, if I wanted to say this out loud, we would say N, choose K. And what this is going to tell us is this is going to give us the number of branches involved. And let me give you a for instance. So let's say I want to go to the, the newest Star Wars movie since those are my favorite movies ever. And I have five friends, but I only have two tickets. All right, so let's talk about my five friends. I'm gonna put my husband on there, otherwise we'd be in some trouble. Um, we got Maticel. All right, she would go. We've got Patrick, he would go. Um, we could potentially take Norma, or maybe I'd take Rob. So there are five of my friends, okay? But imagine now, I only have two tickets, okay? So I want to see how many different combinations are there in here if I have five friends and I could only give them two tickets. So we're going to keep track here. All right, so are you with me? I could take AJ and Maricel. That's one combo, right? I could also take AJ and Patrick, another combo. I could do AJ and Norma, another combo. AJ and Rob, another combo. All right, and that's not it. All right, I think you can see I could also take Maricel and Patrick. Okay. I could take Maricel and Norma, okay. I could take Maricel and Rob, okay. Still not done, I'm gonna keep on going, right? I could take Patrick and Norma, I could take Patrick and Rob, and then I think you'll see my last one is Norma and Rob. All right, so you can see I have 10 possible combinations. All right, now let me show you how I can crunch this number on my calculator. And when we head over to the calculator, um, when I flip this from my written words to the calculator part, you're gonna see me do it again on that side of things. But I wanna do it with this little side example first. So we're gonna be focusing on our math button, which is that num uh, button under the alpha key. So let me turn it on, clear this out. And for the newer operating systems, uh, I think it looks a little bit different on your calculator than mine. But for the older ones like mine, you need to enter this number 10 first. So go ahead and tell folks you got, not 10, excuse me, we only had five friends. I'm in a dream world, I had 10 friends. All right, so we've got five friends, okay? And here we go, I'm gonna hit the math button. And we have to go over to the PRB drop-down menu. And you can hit the right arrow key three times, but I'm gonna be lazy and just hit it the, the left arrow key once. We've been here before, this is where we found random int but we're gonna to go to option three right now, okay? And that says N choose R. That's what that's representing. Now here I wrote N choose K. Your calculator uses the letter R. All right, 
So let me hit that and then two. All right, so I would like out of the five people that I know, how many different ways can I group out those two tickets? And when I hit enter, you see the number 10 popping out. So what I'm trying to say here is that if we had five people and only two tickets, there were 10 possible combinations of folks I could take. And this will ultimately represent the number of branches involved. All right, we're gonna go back to the students doing their homework in just a sec, but that's what we got going on here. All right, so let me go back to this problem and let's start to figure out how on earth do we calculate a binomial probability? All right, so if you have n trials and p is your probability of success, here's your probability formula, right? Binomial probability. So how this goes, the probability that x is equal to some number k, we're gonna go n choose k, p to the k, one minus p to the n minus k. And I know that is a lot of numbers to look at, but we're gonna, we're gonna make this work. If you don't wanna write this symbol, the nk, the thing that looks like a fraction but without the fraction bar, you can use this symbol. All right, but let's, let's try and make this work. So I'm gonna scooch this up so we have plenty of room and we can start to see how this will look. All right, so I would like the probability that x equals eight. So in my problem, k is eight, right? So instead of x equaling k, we have x equaling eight. So I'm gonna put an eight here, I'm gonna put an eight here, and I'm gonna put an eight here, all right? Now, also for our problem, we know n, we had 10 students, so I'm gonna put 10 here, and I'm gonna put 10 here. Lastly, we knew the probability of success, we knew that was 70%. So I'm gonna put 70% here and 70% here. So let's start filling this in for my particular problem. Now I got probability, right parentheses, the equal sign goes next to it. All right, so I'm gonna have 10, choose eight, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do P to the K. So that's gonna be 0.7 to the, and our K was eight, times one minus 0.7 to the N minus K n minus k in this case is 10 minus eight. So let me simplify this just a little bit so we can see what we got. We got 10 choose eight times 0.7 to the eight. Now one minus 0.7 is 30% squared. Let me erase this a little bit just so it can look like a clearer eight. And let's talk about what this means, all right? I wanna find out how many different branches I have for eight students of the 10 to do their homework. And then I will have eight successes, right? Eight students are gonna do their homework, two are not. And whatever this number is, that will be the probability that exactly eight out of 10 students do their homework. All right, so I'm gonna flip over to my calculator. We're gonna show you how you can calculate this exact number the longer way, and then we're gonna pick up the calculator command of binomial PDF. All right, see you in a bit. Hey, Math43, I wanna take a look at calculating a binomial probability on your calculator. I wanna look at it in two ways. I wanna do the longer way, which we probably won't use that much, but I feel as a math teacher, I have to show it to you on your calculator. Uh, and then I wanna show you binomial PDF. So if you remember the context of this question, we had 10 students that may or may not have done their homework, and we wanted to know the probability that of those 10, exactly eight did their homework on time. And we don't know which of the eight, all right, but just any combination of the eight. So if we had eight students doing their homework and, and these trials were all independent, you can see why in this, in this part of the formula, I have 70% raised to the eighth power because we had eight students successfully completing their homework, which also means we had two students who didn't complete their homework. And that's why you see this 30% squared, or one minus 0 0.70 squared. So we had eight students doing their homework and then two students not doing their homework on time. And this 10 choose eight, that tells me how many different combinations out of my 10 students that exactly eight, I should do eight, um, did their homework. Maybe it was the first eight I talked to. Maybe it was the first seven and then the ninth student. Maybe it was the first seventh and then first seven and then the 10th student. Maybe it was the last eight. There's all sorts of different combinations. Those would represent a bunch of different branches. If we were gonna make a tree diagram, they would represent disjoint branches, but we're gonna use this formula here. So I wanna show you how you can plug this in, like I said, the long way, 
using this 10 choose 8 shenanigans. And then we're going to do it the shorter way using binomial PDF. So let's take a look here. If you've got the older operating system like I do, um, you just have to have a little forward thinking when it comes to doing this. And, and what I mean by that is you need to enter the number 10 first, all right? And then hit your math button. It's under your alpha key. We're gonna go over to PRB. We've been here before. We did way back in chapter one, we did random int. But now we're gonna do option three here. We're gonna do N choose R. That's what that symbol stands for, N choose R. Our N is 10, all right? Our R is gonna be eight. So what I'm saying is out of 10 students, can you list me the different combinations or can you list for me how many combinations of eight students there could be if I had 10 total. So when I hit this number, you're gonna see it's 45. Okay, great. So again, if we were making a tree diagram, and I don't want to because it'd be super intense, I would have 45 different branches where eight of the 10 students did their homework on time and two did not do their homework on time. So with all of those disjoint branches, they're all gonna have the same probability because they're gonna have eight students doing their homework and two students not doing their homework. So I'm gonna have 0.7 to the eighth and then 0.2, excuse me, 0.3 squared. But since I have all those disjoint branches, I'll just multiply it by 45 because that's, that's how many branches I would have. So we're gonna take this 45 and we're gonna multiply it by 0.7 raised to the eighth power. And then I'm gonna multiply that again by, you can either type in one minus 0.7 if you want, and you can square that, or just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna just type in 0.3. So let me delete a few of these. Oops, did I go too far? I did. Let me insert the eight back in, and then let me go back over here and delete what I really want. So I will have 0.3 squared. All right, so you can see I have eight successes, two failures, and I have 45 branches, and when I hit enter, we get 0.233. Okay, so that's the, the old school N choose R, P to the K, 1 minus P to the N minus K formula. And I get to be that person that's like, back in my day, I had to use it. And we did, we used it back in my day. But now you have these awesome TI-83, 84s, and we also have Excel and StatCrunch, all these programs that'll crunch this number for us. So let's take a look at how we would do this in our calculator. Let me clear this out. Okay, I'll just hit clear. So we're gonna go into second and vars. So second and dister, all right? And as we start to move through these chapters, we will hit all of these options, all right? When we get to chapter six, we're gonna talk about the normal bell curve. When we get to chapter seven and eight, we're gonna talk about the T distribution, all right? As I scroll down here, if I look at um, seven, oops, there we go, seven and eight, the chi-squared distribution, that's gonna come in chapter 11. The F distribution is in our last chapter, chapter 13, but here we are. So if you look at A and B, you have two binomial calculations. Now, you can see the only difference between the menu item in A and B is this PDF versus CDF. So when you see PDF, you will use PDF when there is an equal sign in your parentheses, right? So whenever there's an equal sign, go ahead and use PDF, all right? Now, if you see a less than or equal to sign, which we will get to, we're not there yet, but it won't always be an equal sign, we will use the CDF. So the P in PDF stands for particular value of X, so a, an equals, okay? The C stands for cumulative values of X. That's why we have less than or equal to, right? That on down. So we have the equals to, we have the eight here. So let's go binomial PDF. So let's hit enter here, okay? Oops, enter. And then you owe your calculator three pieces of information. So the first thing you owe it is your number of trials. So we had 10 students we were gonna look at. Hit the comma key. The next thing you wanna put in is your probability of success for any one individual trial. So the likelihood that any one individual student would do their homework in this case was 70%. I'm gonna hit comma again. And the third thing you need or the third thing you need to tell your calculator is of those 10 trials, how many successes are you interested in? So for us, of those 10 students for whom I was checking homework, I was interested in what's the likelihood exactly eight did their homework. I'm gonna close that parentheses, and then when I hit enter, you see 
0.233, excuse me. And, and one thing I want to just mention before we get out of here, not all calculators will have the binomials in the same spot. So I have this TI-84 from a few years back. So mine is in option A. Uh, and some of you, especially I think the TI-83s, I think they're in option zero. So just be on the lookout. It's somewhere in your list, but you'll have to find it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.